Welcome to lesson 9. In this lesson I want to show you how to draw a cabinet from the scratch just with uh, box shapes and uh, solids. So first thing we do is we want to check that uh, we have the dynamic input on and uh, when you look at the settings I uh, have the enable dimension input where possible. So it prompts us the sizes uh, right near the cursor. I have bullet tracking enabled. That makes it easier to draw square shapes. So first we do, we draw a surrounding box. Let's say our cabinet is uh, 600 wide. We input that into the width here, 600. Then we tap, press tap, and here we can uh, enter the depth. So let's make it 580. Then we press enter, and now it asks us for the height. It's uh, 760 in our case. Press enter. So now here is our cube. That's the outside of our cabinet. I probably would start using a different a different layer now. In our case, we have a board layer here. So this cabinet now has the back screwed on onto the ends and the bottom and the top rail. So we start with the back first. So we use the box command again. We click on one of the corners here. And then we draw it into the direction where we want to have the board. So it's showing us first the length or the width of the, the back. But we actually want to specify the thickness because we want to lock this in. So we press tab and that gives us the next input there. And it's a 12.3 millimeter. 0.3 millimeter thick back. Then we now we press tap and brings us back to the width again. Now we just click somewhere on uh, on on that line. Can be the midpoint on that side. And now we just draw it up and we click at the top point here. Just a mouse click. So our back is already in place there where it has to be. The next thing we want to do is the ends the box command again. We put the start point of the end here and we draw it into the di into direction there. Now it shows us the input for the thickness already so we don't no need to press tab. So we're going to use an 18.3 millimeter board, 18.3. We press tab and now you see there is a, a lock appearing so that that measurement is locked in no matter where, uh, where you put your cursor. Now we just draw it to the front here at the height and we click at those those reference points there. Now we have to make room for the door so we can use the grips here and we just say you want a 20 mil gap for the door. We pull it the grip towards the back and we press 20 and now it has offset it by 20 millimeter and the dist. That's 20 millimeter there. Now we do the same thing for the right hand end. Use the box shape, click at that point here, draw it into the direction we want to. It's already the right input there for our thickness, 18.3, tap. And now we select this point here. Now as soon as we select it, it's like pressing enter and we can click at this point here. Now the next thing would be the bottom. That's pretty easy. We have all the points specified there, except the height. Top rail. Start at that point, we drag it into the direction where we want it. The, now it's showing us the, the length of the rail or the width of the cupboard. Uh, we want actually the depth of the rail. So we press tap, and then we can enter our depth, in our case 120 millimeter. But 
Now we press tab, so it uh, gives us the input for the length back again. And we click at that point here. Now we just need to drag it down and enter 18.3, which is our thickness. So that's our top rail. Now instead of drawing the back rail, I uh, would just copy it, use the copy command, select the object, select this point here and drag it into the corner. The last thing would be our door. And again here, we have the, the width of the door, but we actually want to enter the thickness because this is uh, the size to lock in. So we press tab, it gives us the next prompt, 18.3. We press tab again, so we can select the, the width of it. You can just select this point in this instance, as long as it's uh, somewhere along the line uh, of the width. We drag it up here. So if we want to have a bit of a, a gap on top, we select this again. And we drag it 5mm down or whatever your gap is at the top. Same thing if you need side gaps, you can just use the grips and uh, move them into the direction needed. We don't really need our surrounding box anymore, so we can delete this. Press delete. So here's our cupboard in the conceptional view. Next thing is applying the power properties. We select power properties, we select the whole cabinet. Press enter. You can drag this a bit to the side. That makes it easier to see which part is selected. So this is the, in this case, it's the, the front, the door. We want to uh, have a right in, hinged cabinet, so we call this door right hand. We can select material. We can select the general material and assign the proper material later on in analyzer manufacturing. So we call this an 18 millimeter external. We want to nest it, we want to send it to our nesting machine. So we press that. We have to select an assembly for this. There's no existing assembly, so we press new assembly. We can generate the name, cabinet one. We want to make this a screw dowel construction. All you need to do is press OK. So now this has entered it into assembly name and construction. Now because a lot of these power properties are the same for all the parts. We press set next, so when we select the next the next object, it'll already have these properties assigned to it. The next is one of the others. The material, uh, there's probably uh, going to be internal material, so we don't need to do that at the moment. We save our door. Now the next thing that comes up is the the back rail. So we call this cross rail back and the material is different this time. It's an 18 millimeter internal. All the other items will have the same material so we press set next. The nest is already assigned as well as the assembly so we save this. Now we have the front rail as well, so uh, there's a name for this, that's the cross rail front. Again we save it, bottom, and this is the end right hand. End left hand.
front to back. I remember the back we made in 12 millimeters, so we need to change the material there. 12 millimeter internal. Save. So that's all the power properties assigned now. We can quickly run this through analyzer manufacturing. See if everything is okay. Now it's done. I saw the, the drilling here for the hinges. Because we selected the door right hand, it's done uh, mounting plate drillings into the into the end right hand. Now the only thing that we don't really want is uh, doweling the back on. We just want to screw it on. So uh, we have to make a small change there. So what we need to tell the back is in the power properties that we just want to screw it. So uh, we put in a, a construction method of screw into the part type. We save this. Now let's see what happens. On the geometry script. Now as you can see it has drilled just screw holes into the back now and it uh, deleted the dowel drillings into the bottom. Now you're probably wondering how it sensed where the edges go and all these different parts. Now in Analyzer Manufacturing, if you go to User Setting, Standard Part List, you can see there are part names specified and uh, there are certain uh, uh, edge banding options there. So if you look, and for instance, in your uh, bottom, so that says um, that has a length banding of analyzer top. Now, you have analyzer bottom and top. This uh, refers to the way analyzer displays it on the screen. Analyzer always turns the part in a certain way. In the case of the bottom, it turns the front edge to the top of the display. So that's uh, why it specifies as analyzer top. If you look at the doors, they have edges all around. So there the option are uh, two asterisks, that means it's top and bottom. And uh, the width banding here is the same. Uh, in this case, that means left and right. That means basically it's edged all the way around. Now we want to specify the materials that we want to use in the job. For that, we're going to go into job material equivalent. So you've got the 12 millimeter internal here. So by pressing the asterisk and then enter, it will comes up a material selection box. So you can uh, say I want a 12 millimeter wide particle board for the back. Edge material, we don't need to specify that, there's no edges at the back. Then the external, that's our door. So what we want to do here is we want to use a Formica color panel in grey. So we just uh, type Now edges, we want to use grey ABS edges. ABS in grey and the edge thickness is one millimeter. Analyzer manufacturer we will automatically de deduct one millimeter of the finished size. The eight millimeter internal is our carcass material. You can press asterisk and select an eighteen millimeter white particle board. And we have one millimeter edges as specified in the materials. One millimeter white edge. 
and it's one millimeter thickness again. And that's all we need to do. If we run the geometry script again, we'll see we have one millimeter wide edges on the carcasses and gray edges on our door. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to send that to analyze a cam and to our nesting machine. So we need to specify job properties. Our job number in this case is triple three. Can enter a client. Client reference, a work order number, we select 143. Quantity is one, and it's a test cabinet. We run the script again, just to be safe. All good. Now we run the translate the script to send it to analyzer manufacturing. It lists us all the materials that we are using. Now we can save this. Next thing we want to do is create a nesting layout so we can send it to our CNC machine. So we go over to analyze a cam. We select the top view. Because we can do the nesting layout in the same drawing. So we go to panel optimizer. So here we have the plate length. It's already pre-selected for us, 2420 by 1220. There's a padding that's a padding that's between the parts to make uh, room for our cutter. And the plate trim, which is the surround trim uh, on the outside of the board. Select the parts, go to add parts list. Then we go to our job directory. We select the work order. And here are our uh, different materials. So we are interested first of all in our 18 millimeter wide internal board. So we select that. Here are all the parts with that material. So there's the cross rails, the end, the bottom. Continue with optimization. We select the point where we want to have the panel inserted. And then we press optimize nest. So it has drawn us all the parts and nested them. There is uh, the tool paths for our surrounding cutters. There is uh, the drillings for our hinge blades. Here are the dowel holes. So that's basically all it is. So the next thing you would do now is uh, post-processing it to actually create the machine code. Select post process. Select the object. There could be multiple boards. We just have one in this case. We press enter. And then we process it. So it has created us one uh, NC file. Now we can do the same thing for the rest of the other materials. But that's basically the process of a simple cupboard.